On today's Locked On Senators, do you need a reprieve from all the trade deadline discussions just for a few minutes? Well, we've got two great interviews for you on deck. First up, as a hashtag goalie-friendly show, you know we had to talk to Sens prospect Vladimir Nikitin of the Chilliwack Chiefs after he scored a goal on an empty net. Speaking of empty netters, we also interviewed college athlete Abby Murphy as she went Ridley Gregg on one of their rivals. Looking forward to introducing you to these two absolute beauties and more on this edition of the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators Podcast. Welcome inside episode 998 of the Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Piller up in the Blue Mountains, a reminder you can follow the show on social media. We're at Send Central on Twitter, locked on dot senators on Instagram. The show is free and available on all podcast platforms, including on YouTube, where we remind you that a like, comment, and subscription go a long way to helping the show grow. We also have a live stream planned Friday, today at 3 p.m., right after the trade deadline. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150. If your bet wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Today is Friday, March 8th. And Pilsy, you think the Sens have a couple more trades in them? No, Ross. I think the Sens have one more trade in them. I got to stick to the bet we made. You said over under two and a half. I took the under. You took the over. So I'm hoping they only have one more in them for that sake. But unselfishly, I wouldn't mind if uh, there's more than that. Because as we've seen with this team recently, they could use a bit of a shakeup. They certainly could. And uh, last night was another example of 4-3 overtime loss and a game where in the postcast, I said, if this had happened and this effort was there and they lost in overtime to LA on the second half of back-to-back against Anaheim, but they had played better against Anaheim or at least gotten the result because they did outplay Anaheim, who was missing 25% of their team. And if Ottawa was in a different position in the standings, we wouldn't feel all this type of way about another loss to the LA Kings. It would just be like, okay, we're on to San Jose, but this one, it it lingers a little bit when it's again, a failure of getting the result. They had a lead with 10 minutes left in the third period and just couldn't bring it home. Yeah. And that's the frustrating thing. If you're the Ottawa Senators players is you finally had an opportunity where on the road, you're able to get past regulation when it comes to, uh, is the 0 and 12 stat playing Western Conference teams on the road? Correct. Yeah. So you're 0 for 12 up against the Western Conference teams when you're on the road. So finally, you get to overtime, you have a chance to build your morale and be like, no, we can do this. It only takes 13 tries, but we can do this. And ultimately, they fall short. And Ross, I think a pretty clear message of how frustrating this was for the team watch that goal replay. Claude Giroux smashes his stick on the crossbar within half. Like the goal light's not even fully on and Drew is smashing that stick. And then, uh, you know, the shot where it's a wide shot of them going down the tunnel. Drew is screaming or yelling as he's going down the tunnel to the room. So, and then obviously Timmy, we know he wears his heart on his sleeve. He was pretty uh, upset about it as well. So this is a frustrating game for this team and not the result that they were hoping for at the end of the day. Not at all. And the only positives you can take from this game, Drake Batherson ties his career high in goals. Brady Kachuk scores his 27th goal of the season. I thought he was physically engaged and and playing like the leader. We know he is. And then two point games for Drake Batherson goal and an assist. We mentioned the, the career high tying goal. And then Shane Pinto with two assists in the game as well. The senators are now six, two and two all time when Shane Pinto has two or more points in a game. 
For me, Shane Pinto contract extension would be something that would really be a good vibes thing on Friday, but I think they've got two trades. I think somebody's going to pull trigger on Eric Brandstrom, maybe a Tampa Bay, a team that left out on Noah Hannafin and all the other left-hand shots that have been on the move. Even the Joel Edmondson's kind of that tier below. And some teams are going to be left scrambling at one o'clock and be like, we need one. We need one player to bolster our back end somehow. So that's where I think we might see some action pick up around Eric Brandstrom. The big one is Jacob Chikrin, of course, with the extra year on his contract. We'll see where that one plays out. And a reminder, Ottawa does have one retention slot remaining. So they can either play broker if there's not a deal to be made themselves or Ottawa can use that and either move a Kubalik at 1.25, move a Branny at $1 million or a Chikrin at 2.3. But that one gets complex because then you're holding a 2.3 retention against your cap next season where you're hoping that Ottawa replenishes their own world. So those are really the players I'm looking at. Mark Kastelik left this game. Did he return? I, I didn't even notice. Yeah, he, he was back, okay. but tough night for Casty uh, as far as physically uh, Dude. <laughs> goes because he was... Those he, posts don't move. Yeah, they... Well, especially when you're as big a guy going as fast as he was into there. And then later on in the game, um, he got his leg crunched up against the boards and then was uh, barely able to make it to the bench. And I believe he did go to the room for a bit. So He did. He did. Yeah, so tough night for Casty, but got to battle through. And now it's a tough night for everybody because the uncertainty of the trade deadline is looming and trades are being made all over the place. We'll save our breakdowns for the live stream. I think it'll be a much more casual atmosphere. We look forward to interacting with the chat. I'm going to send out some text tomorrow. I mean, a lot of the people who we'd want on, we know are busy doing their own. Very thing. busy. So yeah. We're going to find a lot of ways of getting the chat involved. Martian will stop by and a whole lot more. So that's all coming up. And in this show, we wanted to kind of take a step away. As I mentioned in the intro from the trade deadline, we've got two great interviews coming up. But Pilsy, before we get to that, let, let me just ask you, what is the biggest trade so far that's been made? Like the most mm-hmm. impactful. Cause last year, I mean, hindsight 2020, Ivan Barbashev had a huge playoff with the Vegas Golden Knights. I think looking back, him for a, a first round pick and a, and a good prospect is probably the one that made the biggest impact. But for me, I'm looking at how Jake Gensel fits in with Carolina. I think he's he might pop off there. Uh, yeah, I mean, we knew Carolina was after a winger. They were rumored to be in the Tarasenko uh, opportunity, but he only wanted to go to Florida. They were talking to him in the off season. That's a good move for them, and they don't give up any. Well, Michael we Bunting love- is is a roster player, but you get a right. big upgrade, uh, Jake Gensel over Michael Bunting, and maybe they're going to be able to extend Gensel as well. We'll see how that goes because Carolina typically doesn't like rental, so. That's a big play, Ross, but I'm I'm going to go a different way. By the way, just before you move off of that, we loved Billy Koivinen in the draft process. He was a second round pick this past year. Okay, yeah, I mean that's a that's a nice pickup for the Pittsburgh Penguins, a team that needs to provide some uh, bolstering to their prospect pipeline, as do the Sens. Obviously, I'm going to go. The biggest trade was the Colorado Avalanche acquiring Casey Middlestat. The one-for-one trade like that is awesome. You love to see a hockey trade like that. And the Colorado Avalanche needed a second-line center badly. And they got a good up-and-coming one that's going to be an RFA next year. He could be a part of their future for a long time. So I like that trade a lot for the Avs. We'll have more breakdowns on the live stream at 3 o'clock today on Friday. Um, Vladimir Nikitin, before we get to that interview, shocked at how well... He's learning English. The PR, great with the Chilliwack Chiefs. Haley Ferguson, friend of ours from school. And she picked him up from the airport the first time in Seattle. And he could barely say more than hello. I was shocked at how well he was versed in English. And I think you guys are really going to enjoy getting to know Vladimir Nikitin. He seems like the kind of guy, gives me Igor vibes. Like just always smiling. Lots to smile about with scoring a goal, though, at the same time. But I really enjoyed that chat, and I think people will, too. Yeah, so did I. And and you can tell uh, he's really found a home for himself in Chilliwack. It seems like nothing will help you learning a language more than wanting to connect with 
your teammates, right? Like he probably realizes all these, all these boys are beauties and he wants to connect with them. So he's really pushing to learn English and it comes across in our interview. And hopefully we're going to get to watch him as his English improves as well. So enjoy Vladimir Nikitin. Not only Vladimir Nikitin, but Abby Murphy as well. Yes. Great conversations coming up. We'll get to those next. You're listening to Locked On Senators, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Factor. Are you guys stressed out about what you're going to do for dinner today? Well, don't worry about it with Factor. Skip the grocery stores, the prep work, the cooking fatigue. Instead, you can get chef crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. Forget frantic lunch preps and rush dinners. Factor's two minute meals are your secret weapon in the new year. Fuel up with restaurant quality meals all delivered to your door. And they've got lots of snack options too. Breakfast, smoothies, juices, and snacks to keep you going throughout the day. Skip the overpriced takeout trap. Factor is cheaper, way more delicious than takeout. If you need a special occasion meal, maybe you forgot about an anniversary, the wife or girlfriend or boyfriend or husband is coming back and you need a dinner plan, well, Gourmet Plus is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, upscale options done easy. Not only does Factor offer fast, simple solutions when you're too busy to cook, but they'll help you stay on top of your goals with healthy meal options. Head to factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50 and use code locked on NHL 50 to get 50% off. That's code locked on NHL 50 at factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50 to get 50% off. Check it out today, guys. Factor. Today's episode is also brought to you by our great friends at the Glebe Central Pub. Go visit the Glebe Central Pub right in the heart of the Glebe at 779 Bank Street and let them know that Locked On Senator sent you. They've got great food items. I'm a huge fan of their wings. Every Monday, they do wing night, 75 cents a wing with a minimum 10 purchase. If you're not eating 10, I mean, come on, get to the wing night, get to all the great events that the Glebe Central Pub has going on. You can check them out on social media. Glebe Central Pub. You can find out when there's live music, open mic night, trivia, and oh yeah, the Send Shuttle. $17 gets you to and from the CTC. And the best part is you get picked up right where you get dropped off. No need to worry about the keys. Sue will do all the heavy lifting. She'll pick you up from the pub an hour and 15 minutes before the game and drop you right back off afterwards for more great vibes at the GCP. Go visit them at 779 Bank Street and let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. The vibes are free at the GCP. All right, we now welcome on a very, very special guest. A Ottawa Senators draft pick this past summer and has made the transition over to North America. He's also won gold at the Div 1 World Junior Championships for Kazakhstan and now... He can add scoring a goal to his resume. Vladimir Nikitin from the BCHL's Chilliwack Chiefs. What's going on, Vladimir? I'm good, guys. It's a good weekend. Decent uh, weekend? It's good weekend, yeah. Six points, one goal. <laughs> no, no big deal. Is this the first time at any level that you've scored a goal? Yeah, it's first time. No, I won't. I won't. It's last year. No, I don't have its moment. Yes, it's a good moment. Score is good. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's been a lot of fun getting to follow along. Now, uh, Vladimir, is this your first experience uh, in Canada? Yeah, it's my first year. Yeah, I think so. It's good year. It's no start. It's not bad. It's my game. No, no good. It's first time here. It's uh, so hard for language. Yeah. No, it's right now. Team help me. Staff help me. It's, I like it. Stay here. Play. You sound very yeah. good for your English for not no, having no, been no, here. No, Come no. on. It's, it's, it's good. not bad. It's not, not bad. <laughs> okay, not bad. No, it's not bad. So we, we had Igor Sokolov, another Sens draft pick yeah. from Russia a few years ago. He said he used to just talk through uh, Google Translate. Is that how you started to... You know, learn a little English through your teammates, or how how did you learn your English so far? It's uh, first time. It's I live billet family. It's billet family translate me sometimes. It's maybe I don't understand, but here ring. It's I only talking. It's don't translate only talking. Yeah, I think so. It's helped me. 
I don't have Russian players. His team, I think so. It's better. Yeah. Well, you're forced to to just learn and speak English. Do you do you watch any like television or or any movies that's helping with yeah, the subtitles? It, yeah, it's I watch Netflix sometimes. Yeah. No. Lots of times I watch Russian video. It's I tired after practice, after games. It's my brain tired. Lots yeah. of talk. Yeah, it's talking parents and watch sometimes NHL. No, it's sometimes Netflix. Now, what did you know about Canada before you moved here to play with the Chilliwack Chiefs? Uh, I know it's hockey country. Yeah, it's so good hockey. Yeah, it's beautiful country. It's simple people. It's very time. It's before here. It's a lot. A lot of guys. It's text me. It's WhatsApp. No, his team. It's don't know me. And text me. It's WhatsApp, bro. How are you? I excited. It's you go here. It's it's good. I like that's, it. Good. That's awesome. And and it all worked out kind of the same summer where you got drafted by the Ottawa Senators. How how did you find out that you got drafted? Ah, uh, it's. No, I before draft, it's maybe two days ago before draft, I tell Karova and before Mount, maybe I tell Carolina and okay. I watch only Arrowa picks and Carolina picks. I see two four picks Arrowa, it's drafted you see Chow guy, I think so. Yeah. I uh, I don't know, it's I think, oh my God, it's done drafted. It's okay, go work next, next year maybe. And I off TV, off telephone, it's, it, I see it's my boy, it's my guy. Oh, no, my boy, it's my, my friend. Yeah. It's call me, bro, you see, I, why? <laughs> you drafted. I, I go call parents, guys, I drafted uh, parents, it's, so excited it's my friend so excited next day I go meet friend it's go restaurant it's i feel so good after his day and next next day it's so amazing oh yeah absolutely uh now senators fans were excited to see uh senators goalie prospect not only stopping the pucks but also scoring goals and you mentioned that that was your first goal but have you tried to score a goal before this one and missed, or was this your first try and you scored? It's my first try. Wow. So you one got a for 100, one. 100% yeah. shooting percentage here. We love that. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> I like it. No, that's awesome. And, and the, my favorite part of it was how you went down the bench and gave everybody the props. Oh, Not yeah. many goalies yeah. get to do that. Oh. You oh. got to. I No. I don't think I score. I see Pac, it his guys, Albruni team, say me, are you kidding me? Yeah, I see. It's go, go, it's score. It's, yeah, I don't know. I want it's maybe emotion. It's Fortnite emotion. No, it's guy call me. I, I don't know. I go here. It's it's amazing. Oh, that's the best. And uh, I want to go back. You, you mentioned you were drafted by Ottawa. I guess, did you not, you weren't able to get your visa on time or what was the case? Because we missed you at uh, development camp. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't have visa. It's moment delivery camp. No, maybe this year I come. Yeah, because it was quick. It's like two days yeah. after the draft. Yeah, so it's so fast. I, my visa make it to mount after okay. draft. After the draft. Yeah, so it does take a little bit of time. Yeah, now, you, have you ever been to Ottawa? Yeah, it's Ottawa Hockney. Yeah, it's you, very Hockney. So you know you're going to get to play World Juniors in Ottawa next yeah, year. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's I know it's I know it's before drafted. I know okay, nice. It's before drafted after Ottawa draft me. Oh, nice. <laughs> I, go, I go to his World Juniors win and next year go Ottawa. It's good so, fun. So have you that group for for Kazakhstan? Have you guys all played on the same team the yeah. whole way up? It's, I think so. Fourteen guys stayed his team. That's awesome. Yeah, it's so good. It's and, else, it's, it's I played it's five years. Oh, okay, sweet. So you guys are all gonna be like like proper teamwork, and yeah. and when you're up against those, those are some big teams you're gonna go up against next year, eh? No, I won't win. Yeah. I want to win. 
yeah, and hey, when you're stopping pucks and scoring goals, that's, that's <laughs> a good, uh, good recipe there. Um, is hockey really growing in Kazakhstan? Like, is that something that, you know, a lot of your friends and family are playing? Or was that something a little different that you're doing? Yeah, it's it's no little different. It's so different. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's... No, first, it's big ring. It's yeah. our guys. It's so... I go here. It's so fast. Kazakhstan is so slow. What a lot of time you think it's so oh, I go here, I go safe, <laughs> I go here. It, yeah, it's more room at his. It's every time body, 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 body. Every time shots. Yeah, I like here. It's right now my game changed. It's I think so 15%. Oh, yeah? yeah that much? It, yeah, it's before I play so fast. Uh, no, it's big ring, it's so fast. All right, now it's so small ring. No, I think no, pack go me. I, I only stay, come me. Yeah, it's my job. So, yeah. uh, Chilwak Chiefs obviously a great organization, they have a lot of history. How did it come about that this is where you ended up? Yeah, his organization, <laughs> it's really so good. I think so. No, I go to the Rapids, you know, you see each other team, it's. Yep. His better stuff, ring, I think so. It's better, good stuff. It's oh guys help me every time, support me. Maybe I want I text. It's every time help and good coach play here. It's maybe ten years ago. I note his organization, good ring, very good ring, very good locker room, very big history. Lots of a lot of guys committed. It's yeah. university. It's ah. sometimes guys drafted it's NHL. I I happy I stay here. That's yeah. awesome. Final question for me, Vladimir. And I just want to say next year at the World Juniors, there's gonna be a lot of fans that are watching you and very excited to see you as a potential guy who's growing in the organization. And you said your game just getting better as you're in North America. Number 55 for a goalie isn't very common. Is there a story behind that? Yeah, it's um I play hockey, it's small city. My goalie coach, it's old goalie coach, but it's 55 number. He one time, I think so. Why not? I like it. Hey, yeah. it it's unique. It's very good. Yeah. It, I don't I, see goalie, it's number 55. No, I like it. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Uh, last question for me. Are you going to try to score another goal this season or is one goal that's good enough? Uh, final. Final? Yeah, final. Okay, well, we need one in the playoffs then. How yeah. about that? Okay. okay? There we go. <laughs> All right. Vladimir, really appreciate you uh, joining the show. It was great to meet you, and we're going to do this again. And I want to see how your English just keeps improving like your game thank as well. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Indeed. When you're drafting your fantasy team, do you ever wish you could do the same with your business team? If you're building a roster to win the championship, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one easy place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills. Why do that when you can do it all with Indeed? With Instant Match, as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your job description, and you can invite them to apply right away. So sit back, relax, put your feet up, and let Indeed do the hard work for you. Sponsor a job, and boom. Instant Match shows you candidates whose resumes on Indeed fit your job description right after you post. With Instant Match, you're going to be hiring fast. Join over 3 million businesses worldwide using Indeed to hire great talent fast. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, every dollar counts. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. Go to Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Today's episode is also brought to you by Farm to Fork. Go visit farmtoforkdelivery.ca for all the premium meat and seafood your heart desires. Their freezer bundles are unbelievable because you know that they're antibiotic-free, 
no hormones, all natural, gluten-free products. And not only that, but they are individually vacuum sealed right at the butcher's table. So you know they are sealing in all that freshness. You can get the bundles to make sure that you're never hungry at home. If you want, you know, ah, tonight I want steak, but you don't want to go make the trek through the snow to the store. Well, you can just go into your freezer and know that you're getting high quality meat available just that day. We always send our friends farm to fork delivery. It makes a great gift because who doesn't like the gift? of high quality protein you, because you're a listener of locked on senators. You can get 10% off your first order by using our promo code L O S P 10. There's free and convenient delivery. You receive notifications as the order is nearing your home. The grass fed beef is what I've been obsessed with recently. And whether it's the ground beef or one of their great steak options, you know, you're getting the best quality ingredients and the best quality products. They also have sustainable seafood selections like wild-caught sockeye salmon. And you can go to farmtoforkdelivery.ca. That's the number two, farmtoforkdelivery.ca, and use our promo code LOSP10 for 10% off your first purchase. Taste the farm-to-fork difference. You will never go back to grocery store meats. All right, we now welcome on a very special guest an olympic silver medalist as a part of a growing trophy case for this illinois native we're heading to the university of minnesota where we bring on leading goal scorer in ncaa women's hockey and leading penalty minute getter as well abby murphy welcome to locked on sense how are you doing today good i'm doing great happy to be on here so excited well, we've got a lot to get into. I don't know if you can see that third point there. We're going to talk proper empty net goal etiquette. But first, how's the season <laughs> going so far? It's going good. You know, uh, it flies by, which is crazy. Um, only about five five losses on the season. So um, it was good there. Now we're already heading into playoffs. So we're excited. Game on Friday. So I'm um, just trying to figure out what we can do as a team. So I'm um, really happy with our group, though, honestly, as as the season comes to an end. So. We'll see how it goes. So is there a nationals or anything afterwards? Because I know you guys have your conference semifinals. You mentioned Friday and then on Saturday would be the championship game. If you're able to come through this weekend, is there more hockey to have after that? Yes. Yeah. So this is just like a league league championship. Um, there's like a con regular conference, which is like whoever has the most points in the league. And then this is like the actual league championship. It's called the WCHA final faceoff. Um, so whoever wins that gets a direct bid into nationals that will be held in New Hampshire, I believe it is. Um, and then whatever teams kind of don't, you kind of just hope for a bid. Um, so obviously hoping to win it. <laughs> it's always, always wanted. So yes, more hockey though. Now we know Minnesota is the state of hockey famously uh, named. So how big is the hype at school right now with uh, the run you guys are going on right now? Yeah, no, I, I love being called a hockey school. You know, everyone kind of yeah. gives us crap for it. They hate the hockey team. <laughs> um, no, but it's fun. You know, obviously we get good fans every every game. So that's kind of been fun. But yeah, I think every time we uh, get into the end of the season, everyone kind of all in, all in for us. So it's uh, really cool to see, honestly. Now, is, what, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, would you say your biggest rival then would be, I don't know, maybe uh, Minnesota Duluth school? Hmm. I mean, for in-state, I'd say yes, 100%. I mean, we okay. have given them some fair – they've given us fair games, you know, really close one goal, two game leads and stuff like that. So, I mean, it they're not considered our rival. Ours are more Ohio and Wisconsin. Okay, um, Wisconsin are, coming up soon. Yeah, so – but we're definitely considered their rival. But obviously, like, they're a great team. So, every time we play them, it's it's kind of you're – getting, you're getting their all, you know. Yeah, no doubt. So let's rewind a couple of weeks ago then. And, and we saw you come in and, and just absolutely rip one, like a perfect strike right over the dirt. If, you, if you're talking baseball terms and what was that pre-planned or a heat of the moment? Take us through your thought process, because obviously I think it was a week earlier that Ridley Gregg did that in the Battle of Ontario between the Sens and Leafs. Yeah. Had you seen that? Did that give you the idea or, or run me through your thought process? Yeah, I mean... I just got the puck and then it came right to my head and I was like, this isn't going to be smart, but I don't <laughs> think a lot when I play, like tell you, like I laughed skating down that ice. Like 
I was like thinking like, do I do it? Do I not? And I'm like, why not? Like, that's me. Like, I mean, I knew what I was going to get after it. Like I expected. Oh yeah. Like, I saw Ridley Greg get like absolutely smashed by like the Toronto Maple Leafs guys. So I'm like, I expected everything, but I did watch that video and I knew exactly what I was doing. If I'm being honest, like right when it happened, but it was so, it just happened so quick. Like, <laughs> Honestly, it was just more kind of a fun thing. Like, it was nothing personal. Like, I'm not someone who, like, holds on to that stuff, but just trying to do it for the women's game, do it, make make people laugh, you know? Like, that's kind of my goal. That's what it's all about. And uh, I got a DM from Cheryl Pounder, Olympic gold medalist, and uh, she said you kind of play like Ridley Gregg a little bit. Like, you're not afraid to go in the corners, mix it up at all. And we saw you had the hands up right away, ready for whatever was coming. But Well, she man. was welcoming on. She was like, yeah. all right, yeah. what, what do you Come want? On. Let's go. What do you want? <laughs> and, and I love, hey, they're not our rivals, but we're theirs. So, yeah, it's just, yeah. you know what? You flex your muscle, and, and we love to see that. And the, the cherry on top, I don't know who runs the social media for the University of Minnesota. But t- oh tweet at, at the Maple Leafs saying, hey, don't get yeah. too offended. That's all time. Yeah, it was pretty funny. I mean, yeah. The teammates loved it? They did. Yeah, I mean, it was it was kind of the topic of conversation after in the locker room. I was a little scared <laughs> I was going to get in trouble, but I'm like, nah, I don't think I will, you know? So, uh, no. Yeah, well, uh, the thing is, say what you want, sure. Maybe a slap shot into the empty net is a little extra, but I'm all for, you got to bury that thing. If you got it, we like, all you have to do is go back to so long ago, Patrick Stefan in the NHL decides he's just going to mosey in and tap it in backhand puck bounces over a stick. He falls over Edmonton goes the other way, scores, ties it. And then Edmonton won the game in overtime all because he was trying to be too nice of a guy and wanted to yep. gently put the puck in the net. Screw that. If you got a chance, you got to bury it. So I respect that. Abby. I agree. I, I remember seeing that video too. It's like top 10 most fell. So I'm like, I mean, I could have had the stick break in half and then yeah. I think that's worst case scenario. Um, but no, yeah, I agree. I mean, it's probably the easiest way to put it in there, but yeah. I've missed a lot of empty nets in my life. Trust me. My, <laughs> like when I was younger, oh gosh, those were the, always the hardest ones to score. Like from like, <laughs> two lines and stuff, the worst. I'm I'm giving you a look right now because in NCAA you have 70 goals in 95 games. I don't think burying the pucks necessarily too Fair. difficult for you. <laughs> it's just so much pressure when the like when the net's empty, like you know. Well, but we're, we're I, gonna... mean, I was on a breakaway though, so I I couldn't miss that. That's so totally we're actually different. we're gonna put some some thoughts into your head for this weekend against Wisconsin. You've already scored on a slap shot. So this time, and this arrival, you're going to go down. You're going to wind up for a slap shot. Everyone thinks you're going to do it again. And then just allow the momentum of the puck to carry it into the oh, net and just oh. skate off. Like the Kutra of the no move. The no you move. like that one? Yeah, I love that one. Okay. <laughs> I All mean, right. I don't know. I don't know. If I kind Playoff. of do it. I, don't, I think I'm a one and done. Well, no. exactly. Now you're evolving it. You're not staying <laughs> with the same. It's got to evolve. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah, I mean, that's part two for sure. I love it. The sequel. Get them to get them to just get so angry. And then it's like, what? Well, I, I didn't do anything though. I like, yeah. And then you just give that yeah. shrug, the smile. There's a side <laughs> angle of, of you when you scored the goal there of the celebration and the smile was all the time. We appreciate it, Abby. Anything that's going to get a little, a little noise, a little, you know, action on social media. We're all for, and you know what? I talk about the evolution. I want to touch on the evolution of the women's game. Obviously, Minnesota, lucky enough to be one of the original six in the PWHL. Ottawa also has a team where we're based. We love, obviously, following along with the PWHL. I'm sure you have some friends who are already in the league from your Olympic, your world championship team. What's it been like watching from the outside and potentially one day being a part of that league? Yeah, it's so cool. I mean, especially having a team playing like 12 minutes away, you know, getting – getting out there to those games has just been so cool to see. Like they've strived for that for a really, really long time. And it's just inspiring to see um, how much effort and time that they've put into that. And and now it's actually happening. Like it's a dream come true for them. And uh, obviously for many of us who are, are once going to do that. So, I mean, it's just, it, it's a privilege to be watching them, you know, like doing what they love. It's their job now. Um, 
So I just I think it's only going to grow from here on out. Um, but I think the hockey's been great, you know, yep. um, just the competitiveness, aggressiveness, like bodies are kind of getting put around now, which is kind of fun, fun to see. So it's my kind of thing. Obviously, you guys know that. But um, no, it's just cool. I mean, so so much fun. I, I really have nothing more to say. But yeah, can't wait for the future of it. Well, do you know any of the the ladies on the Ottawa team? I know you played with Skimura for a little while. She's been super impressive. And anyone yeah. else on, on the Ottawa team that you know? Uh, my roommate's actually Josie Dunn, uh, her older sister, Jincy. Jincy yeah. Rose. Her last name's Rose now. But, yeah, her and then Savannah Harmon. And then, yeah, a couple other people. So They got a lot of Americans on the team, eh? Yeah, yeah. So you're, you're going back for one more year at, at Minnesota? Can we break yes. the news? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, people know people know okay. i still have two years of eligibility which is kind of crazy so nice yeah and it's at the point now where are uh, not to put words in your mouth but are you feeling like you only get the college experience once you're probably gonna you know take advantage of that <laughs> yeah i've loved it so far i mean why leave you know it's only year one of the pwhl so i'm um, just kind of letting it soak in for a little bit obviously to get my business degree you know <laughs> don't want to leave yet so we'll see well, you know, you're going to have a lot of fans in Ottawa hoping that you get oh, yeah. drafted up here after that <laughs> slap shot because it was obviously, you know, front and center right after the Ridley Gregg thing. So we've kind of put you in, in a fan favorite category already. Just so you know, not, not you know, crossing any lines. We're not, you know, we're not giving you anything as incentive to come to Ottawa, but just saying we'd be happy to have you one day. But wherever you end up, Abby, we're, we're obviously going to be following your career closely right now. Best of luck this weekend. And Hey, go win a natty. We'll get you back on and we'll discuss the no slap shot, slap shot, empty net goal that you're going to put up. But we appreciate you taking the time doing this and thanks for making hockey fun. That was a blast to see. Heck yeah. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. All right, Nilsey. I want to give a big round of stick tap for the two beauties that joined us on today's show. A little bit different. And I think we nailed it with these two guests, Vladimir Nikitin, who's been unstoppable in the BCHL over the last number of, of weeks. And Abby Murphy is just an unstoppable force in women's hockey. Just casually told us after, yeah, you know, rivalry series. I was up on a line with Hillary Knight playing on the top line. Like she's going to be a player to watch for the next decade or two in women's hockey. So it was great getting to chat with her and just seems like a super down to earth individual. Yeah. You know, scoring on empty nets, it's not always easy. It's like you have 75 goals in 90 games. So really had some good fun with those two chats. Oh yeah. Both of them confident goal scorers in their own right. And um, you love to see it. We definitely wanted to bring, you know, a little lighter side of uh Sens hockey goalie prospect we love our, our goalies and vladimir nikitin was an exciting story and then abby murphy doing the ridley greg so we wanted to lighten up the mood a little with trade deadline looming and uh, all these sends losses piling up here yes and good luck to abby tonight they're kicking off their uh their conference semifinals against wisconsin so all that to say you mentioned trade deadline and this was a nice reprieve as i mentioned off the top of the show but we are going to have our live show today 3 p.m so be there 3 p.m. Eastern on YouTube. We will post the audio afterwards, but it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to see what kind of guests we can get, what kind of maybe we'll get some trade deadline trivia. We'll have some fun with this, but 3 p.m. We will see you on our YouTube page. Pilsy, final thoughts on today's show. This has been uh, an interesting week for the Ottawa Senators, and today could be a big day or it could be a disappointing day as Sens fans were not exactly thrilled with the first trade that happened. So let's see Steve Steos and the gang uh, turn things around here. I'm looking forward to a, a, a kind of settling down of, of everything over the next little while. And then, I mean, this summer, and you heard Elliot Friedman say it multiple times, this summer is where things could get very interesting for the Ottawa Senators. So we've got all that to look forward to. Hope you enjoyed today's show. And a reminder to subscribe, like, comment, wherever you get your podcasts. It all does help the show grow. For today, we say goodbye. Or for this morning, we say goodbye because we'll see you this afternoon. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the Locked On Senators Podcast, your team every day. <laughs>